17 yard line. First How was the pizza tonight? I was late. The Pier 49 Pizza. Yes. Their slogan is fall in love with pizza again. Hard to do that when you've never fallen out of love <laughs> with the Pier 49 Pizza. You I can renew your relationship. I renew my vows with pizza, Pier 49 Pizza, regularly. They are one of our sponsors. They bring us a pile of pizzas each and every Friday. It's the only place I want pizza anymore, it's Pier 49. Well, if you have it other times during the week, somewhere else, it's just not as good. <laughs> Watts with the give, picks up a yard. It's Carver with the give, Watts with the take. Watts picks up a yard. 840 to play in the first period. No score. Skyview's first possession. High formation for Skyview. Give to Watts. Looking for a hole. Nothing. Back to the line of scrimmage, and that is it. Nick Taylor with the tackle. Alex Watts uh, carries the ball more than anybody this season for Skyview before this game. 42 carries for 178 yards, just over four yards per carry with, with one touchdown. Nick Carver uh, is, is uh, more proficient as a rusher. Yeah, he's averaging almost eight yards a carry, I believe. 7.06, yep. Third and ten. Watts swings out. Carver's in trouble. Mills, Wells, excuse me, takes him down. I, I was waiting to say that this season. I remember Silas Mills that used to play uh, basketball for Utah State. Yep. Well, Silas Wells, 60, Silas Wells takes him down. Big number six zero. That's well, just a great bull rush. Gets right up field, and Carver can't do anything there with the large wingspan of Silas Wells. He sheds the blocker and makes the play. Six foot three, 245 pound junior. He is a junior. That's the, another thing. Mountain Crest has a lot of youngsters on their squad. And they're big. High kick, but short. Chip shots coming Oh, back. and it's off the back of one of the Mustangs. He didn't even see it coming in Skyview with the first break of the ball game. Has the ball at their own 45-yard line. I think that was Peterson, number nine. He's running downfield to cover, and somebody's yelling to get away from it, so he ducks. Take a look at number nine. He just stopped. He stopped, kind of curled his head up to try and hide. Boom. Well, it's not Peterson. That's number 16, Zach Kimball. Bad luck. Bad luck. Good luck if you were in the blue and gold. And bad luck for Kimball and good luck for the Bobcats. Skyview's offense back out on the field. Watts <laughs> in the backfield with Carver. That's the kind of thing you'll never live down in film. <laughs> <laughs> Even though he had no way of knowing it was there. Nope. Carver with a hard count trying to get Mountain Crest to jump off sides. Almost did. Taking a look at the defensive formation and then looking to the sideline for the play. Three-man rush. They swing it out to Watts and it's incomplete. Ooh, and that's a dangerous play if you're Skyview. If he's not just a half yard ahead of the quarterback like he was, that's a lateral, not a pass. Second and ten. I don't know that that was even Watts. It wasn't twelve. Watts stayed in the backfield, and that was Mitchell Larson. Principal Dave Swenson walking the sideline with a grandchild, I believe. Dave's a great guy. Now they're running the little tunnel screen. Inside with Jensen, nothing doing. In fact, he's going to lose a yard. Well, this guy, he's got to get something going on defense. Can't keep counting on a punt hitting the defender in the back. No gain on the play. Third and ten. Mountain Crest is playing two deep safeties, so two over the top. Man on one side, cover two on the other. It's always tough. There's looks like Watts out of the backfield with the catch, and it was, and he picks up about three, and that's it. Well, you can afford to play those two deep safeties for Mountain Crest because they have really fast linebackers in Richardson and Peterson. 
Well, it's so tough as a quarterback to throw against that if they're playing a true cover two. The Mountain Crest punt return unit back out on the field and the Skyview punting team being set to give it away. See if they can get it back like they did last time. So Eddie Hall and Carlson back. Let's kick a little bit deeper, but it goes out of bounds and Mountain Crest will take over. He'll move up to about the 32, I think. He's still walking. All right, their own 35-yard line. Skyview one and three on the season. We're, you know, I was looking at who these teams have played so far in the quote-unquote preseason or the non-region part of their schedule. Skyview's lost to Northridge, Highland of Idaho, and Brighton beat Olympus. All three of their losses came to really good teams. Ten and four overall record of the teams that, that Skyview has played. So they played a tough non-region schedule. Pitch and catch out there for the Mustangs as Taylor, Taylor hauls in the pass from the ball. Good for eight yards. Mountain has really moved the ball at will. When they get a penalty though it's kind of stalled their drives and that's one of the things that we talked about that Coach Wooten Pulling his hair out over. Good thing he's got a lot of hair. He's got a mane. <laughs> it makes me angry. Yeah, I was so mad I shaved my head. <laughs> Hall will keep. First down. Lunge forward for three. And you heard it, first down. That's an easy one for us to call because we're right down that line. <laughs> That'll be the last easy call from up here. We talked about Skyview's schedule. You look at Mountain Crest. They played Provo, who's 1-3. and three. Woods Cross, 2-2. Two and two. Weaver's 0-4. The Lone Peak, 4-0. and, oh, and Most people think they are the best team in the state. So Mountain Crest's non-region schedule, numbers-wise, not quite as doesn't look quite as tough as Skyview's with 7-9 and nine opponents overall. But you throw a lone peak in there, and the Woods Cross team, not a bad team. No. Looking for Carlson on the out as Hall was under a little bit of pressure. And throws it wide. Carlson, incomplete. Second and ten. Chris keeping a blocker in to give Eddie Hall some time. Doesn't need it. Throws it early, but it's a little wide. And Carlson can't pick it up. That brings out a second down of 10. One guy to watch for Skyview, number 25, linebacker Cole Bangeter. He's fourth in 4A, third in 4A, with 9.5 tackles per game. So he'll put the hat on some people. Time for Hall, and he finds his man, a gain of about seven. Out there. Tackle made by Trey Hansen, 52. I think that's his third unassisted tackle this game, isn't it? Yeah, we don't keep that stat, but I'm just doing it in my head. He's yeah, up. that's the third one we've called his name on. Yeah. It's been him. Third and three. Under four minutes to play in the first period. We're scoreless in Smithfield. Three-man rush. Again, lots of time for Hall. And he takes off. He's got the markers, and he's out of bounds up near the 40. Well, that's what makes Mountain Crest so tough to defend. You can drop eight men back in coverage, which Skyview does. Only send three on the pass rush, and Eddie Hall reads that quickly, pulls the ball down, and turns into a running weapon as opposed to a throwing weapon. He's a pretty good rusher. as Hall, leading rusher for Mountain Crest. 14 yards on four carries for Hall thus far. The second possession for the Mustang offense. Pulling guard, pulling tackle, and pulling down Joseph Carley. Is number 23, Corbin Lee. Ball carrier number eight, Joseph Carlson. Tackle in the backfield by number 23, Corbin Lee. Second. Good penetration that and pulling guard does not get his block. 14. Not much a running back can do about that when the gold hat is in the backfield. Yeah, it's never good with one of, when one of your linemen's on his back. Second down and 13. Hall fakes the give. Uncorks one. He's looking downfield for Fuller. And Fuller hauls it in. 
Touchdown, Mountain Crest. No flags. 42 yards. From the Skyview faithful, want a flag. They want a little uh, offensive illegal use of the hands. Maybe we'll see that on the uh, end of the play. But it looked like both guys were hand fighting there. And that's a tough call to make when they're both getting after it. It's actually 46 yards. Nice oh. fake to freeze the linebackers. We saw Hall going deep a couple of weeks ago, and his pass didn't get there. This one got there. Can't really see there as they kind of fought out there with Wells. And the PAT's good, 7-0. Mountain Crest with the early lead in Smithfield. When you find yourself in the middle of a disaster, you should call someone you trust. At ARS, we've helped thousands of people put their homes and their lives back together. ARS has the expertise to come in there and tell you what, what your situation is. I just always felt confident that I could call the owner of ARS and they would determine the best route to take. I could always trust what they said. Whether you've had a fire, a flood, storm damage, mold, or just dirty carpets, ARS has got you covered. Call ARS when you need us the most. 7-0 Mountain Crest with the early lead on the strength of a 46-yard touchdown pass from Eddie Hall to Braden Fuller. They faked the run and then went up top. Watts, who fields it down near his own goal line, brings it out to about the 22. And that's where Skyview will take over now, trailing by a touchdown. Great play fake, and it gives Eddie Hall a chance to really step into this throw. It's still a little bit short, but he throws it up high enough, and the receiver turns around and sees the ball coming. He can make a play on it. Touchdown, Mountain Crest. For Hall, that was his seventh touchdown pass against two interceptions this season. Nick Carver ran for 150 yards against Olympus, and now he's got a lot of white jerseys all over him. And they're blowing whistles out there. Are they blowing them before the play? And I don't know. You know, the play went on, and Coach Anders not real happy. He's like, hey, my quarterback's taking a beating. Well, actually, in that play, Carver was doing most of the hitting, still running while the Mountain Crest defenders were standing still. Mm -hmm. they, didn't, they didn't whistle early there. Right about here, the whistle blows. Yeah, I think they faked out the official. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You see Carver Coach, still working his guts out. And, and Coach Anders still down there chewing on the official on the near sideline yeah, and they and it's still first down I'm not sure what happened there but Skyview gets another play Jensen can't haul it in well I think you're exactly right the official was faked out just like our cameraman thinking that was a quick give up the middle and the play was dead but Carver's running around the end of it <laughs> Second and ten after the incompletion. That's actually better when that, than what they would have had if they would have let that first play stand. Carver in the gun. They have 11. They don't have 11. Here comes somebody late. Ren Berger. Getting the play from the man in the slot. Little counter play, and that's Giro. That picks up about five. Ball carrier number 21, Zach Allen. No, was it Allen? 21. Number 20, Sean Giro. Okay, thank you. It was 21, <laughs> Sean Giro. I thought I was crazy for a minute, and I'm looking down, and I can hear the announcer. Hey, that's the S. E. Needham Jewelers middle of the block, center of the clock. It's where Utah goes to get engaged. 
and I hate that word right now because it's so personal. 